Welcome back everyone. So in today's video we're going to be going over our server rack. So this is located in my office slash server room. Um, as you can see, there's the desk, the TV. It's a bit of a mess. There's some stuff on the sofa. We're using some custom smart home technology up here. Lots of cables, MagSafe, all that sort of stuff. Fire extinguisher is always important. TV over here, other TV over here. Cool. So this is the rack basically. And next to the air conditioning unit to keep it all cool. But I'll just start, I'll start at the bottom and work our way out. So this is the bottom of the rack. So down here we've got the Trip Light UPS. This is our UPS of choice. Well, we just sort of bought it when we had it, but we bought it a long time ago. So it doesn't really handle the devices we've got. So I don't know how well this will come up. But around here we've got a cable here that comes out the back of it where the batteries used to be. That runs externally downstairs where outside in a locked container we've got external UPS batteries. Lots of, uh, what are they? They're like deep cycle marine batteries, so they work really well, but of course you can't get loads of cycles out of them. And then following that up, we've got some PDUs. So this one sort of does all the TV sort of stuff, as you can tell. And then this one, too fair, that also seems to do some of the TV stuff. Uh, back there, actually behind it, even, isn't it? There's another, there is another PDU because we've got more stuff. So following that up, we've got this box here which is the control for your Samsung TV they do this clever technology where they allow you to put all the boxes here and then you run a single fiber cable I don't know if you can see that back here here there's a fiber cable there and then this is the same this is another one but this is for a newer Samsung TV and then stuck behind there somewhere is the Harmony Hub um, follow that up we've got Sky Q so this is the Sky, main Sky Q so this Sky Q connects to this and this Apple TV connects to this other than that these other Sky Qs connect to different devices around the house um, SkyQ has its own VLAN. Um, we've noticed issues with SkyQ on Unify, so we try and keep it on its own VLAN, running explicitly on the Netgear Pro Safe switch that we'll come to. Um, so yeah, so we have that, and then we have these two SkyQ boxes. As you can see here, they have a little custom change. The aerials, the internal aerials, have been removed and ran over Cat5 to external locations in the house. Following that up, we've got our sort of smart home section. So this is Trad Fry Hub. Trad Fry from Ikea. Then we've got two Hue Hubs. Everyone always asks, why two Hue Hubs? The two Hue Hubs are because this one's got 150 devices on it or whatever the limit is. I think it's about 150. It slows it down, don't really work very well. So we have to get another one to make it better. But then they both connect to Habitat anyway. So yeah. We've got a Habitat Hub, but this is the 7, the 7, the C7. They've just released the C8, we're looking at getting that, but currently this is working perfectly fine. How much can you see back there? So back there, there is a Apple Airport Wi-Fi thing, what they're called. But we're using that for its external aerial sort, 3.5mm um, jack cable, sorry that connects into a Sonos box, which is located there. Coming up from that, we've got the keyboard. Keyboard's just as important, we're like running that around. Um, then we've got some storage. So we should really be using a NAS, but you're just using some hard drive enclosures. So this has got four, five hard drives in it, five hard drives in this one, and then three hard drives in this one. This one is entirely CCTV, but the two, so it's got one SSD in it for some cache, and then two main 12 terabyte hard drives in it. But these connect to the relevant servers up here. So this one, which is the main one, connects to the main server. And this is CCTV connects explicitly to the CCTV server. Following that, we've got the Amplify, whatever it's called. Um, this is to allow us to use the teleport device, which I don't have with me, but the teleport device is like a remote connection thing. I've just made a video, or well, I made a video a few days ago, about GRE tunnel teleport. And that's what we're going to be using now as opposed to the type of device. But this is what we used to have running that. It's quite neat to be fair, like, that's all we need to connect to it. We've just got it in bridge mode, it works. And then this is our modem. So we have Virgin Media business connection. Where we get some static IP addresses, all that sort of stuff. This is the modem. And then up here they have some fiber termination. I don't know how well you can see that we've got some that. Then we've got some like energy monitoring stuff here. Little fuse box. Um, we have the Unify failover device. That works really well. It's just connected straight into the network switch. 
So going out from that, so in here we've got the edge router. People always ask, why you got an edge router? So we've got an edge router because we've got some static IP addresses, basically. We get 13 static IP addresses in a range. Most of them go into the edge router. One of them goes straight into the unified gateway. The edge router then distributes them using our server network to the servers and that so that they can be accessed remotely. That makes it a lot, much easier to use, meaning we do firewall routing here on this. We're also going to be using this for some GRE and some routing. This, so this also does the SkyQ network to keep it out of Unify and stuff like that. Like it's going to straight into this switch. So this is the Netgear ProSafe SG750E. Um, it's quite a good switch, to be fair. It's a 48 port switch with two SFP ports that we've been able to use. Um, it's quite uh, it's quite thin in comparison to some of the POE ones by Unify. But the, the it works really well. We the only reason we still have it and have it upgraded to Unify is because it's in, it's been running, and it's got config on it. But of course, we back up the config. But I don't want to take all these cables out. Right, we should have got a patch panel, but we don't. We don't have a patch panel. Following that, we've got some Unify twenty four port two hundred fifty watt POE switches. These run. This one runs all the access points and cameras, and some of the cameras are now starting to go to this one. But this is to allow us to have multiple cameras. So we've got something like 30, 40 unified cameras. There's one over there. You see there? Yeah, so the, that's how this works. We're using those unified cameras. Um, they're still running on unified video, which is running over here on this server. Yes, yes, I know. We should probably upgrade to protect. But we're still using, using unified video. It's got an entire custom skin running on it. So this is the cloud key. Although we're not actually using the cloud key on the cloud key because it keeps crashing. So what used to be the unified video hard drive, hardware, is just running Ubuntu now and we've got the cloud key actually running on that as well as some other stuff so that will act as terminus for connections externally using a proxy. Um, yeah, so that's basically this. Um, then we've just got another switch, cloud key. It's then got two uplinks to the unified gateway so they're splitting the network traffic. So we have something like 10 VLANs, about five of them go in one, five of them go in the other. Of course, some of them are just directly from here, so that's just an overview. But this is a direct cable into the back of the modem. Everything else comes out of this cable, which actually goes into the switch into a VLAN. But then up here, dangling precariously off of one bracket. I know, don't. I've lost the bracket and I don't know where it's gone. It's did some more screws, didn't it? Um, We've got one more switch. This is just because this is full and we don't want to add non-POE devices to the POE switches. So we've had to add another switch. I just happen to have that one laid around. It is a managed switch. However, we're not using any of the managed functionality. It's purely got one VLAN on it and we're running in that one VLAN. But I think that covers the whole network stack. Like, it's a bit of a mess back there, but... That's the network stack, and then, as you can see, there are lots of cables. So the cables come over here, which run behind here, and then run off into the ceiling over there. And then there's also a load of cables that run off up there. And then there are some that go down through that hole there, somewhere. Not that you can see that very well. But yeah, so I hope, so I'm gonna probably talk about the network configuration now. With Unify, and you'll see a bit more of an overview. As you saw upstairs, we've got a lot of Unify network equipment. So then downstairs and around the house, we've got Unify access points, as well as Unify cameras, just to keep us secure and that peace of mind. So as you just saw, we have lots of Unify equipment in our server rack around the house. Um, this is the basic list of devices on our site. We have multiple sites, but I'm just gonna show you this, our main site, which is the one we saw the video about today. Um, so we've got the USG as the main head router, then we've got the switches for CCTV and access points, and then the second one, which is now an increased. Tell you what, let's look at this in the um, topology. Um, so you've got the USG, then it's it, the CCTV switch 2, ironically, is first because we added it later, and then we just put it above, and which is how it goes. Um, Going on from that, we've got some access points. So they come out of this, we go to the hot tub switching, which is by the hot tub. So next to the hot tub, we've got like a projector and TV setup. We 
projection screen. I might make a video about that if there's interest, but if it's not, that won't be happening. But it's got projectors, Sonos, all that sort of stuff, remote control, technology, all that sort of thing. Going to the hot tub. Uh, then we've got the CCV IP switch covering most of the access points and the UAT, the ULTE Pro, which is, to be fair, great product, great product. We don't have any issues with it. I do have an issue with it where I, I had to give it like a really large gigabyte number as opposed to just saying it's unlimited. It seems to not work. Um, not sure why the gym switch seems to think it's not connected. I'm pretty sure it's connected to the CCTV switch too. It's in the gym. It's by the gym TV. And then we've got the our conservatory going off of that with the gym access point. Um, so then, so there's some Wi-Fi settings. Let's look at the Wi-Fi. We have a few networks. So we have the guest network. We have an open guest network, which uses captive portal technology. We're using an external captive portal. I believe, yep. Whatever I'm looking for that, but we're using an external captive portal. Um, going back, um, we've got the main network. This is Thomas Network, me, Thomas Network. Um, yeah, don't ask. But we got that's where we've got everyone on. Everything's using it. It's just, it's just a good, solid, it's just WAP. Um, this isn't really making much sense, is it? Um, but yeah, so this is just, it's just got sort of standard settings, what we've worked out works. Uh, we've got TDS Net, so this is our non-network connected network, basically. It's just our um, internal only. So this use, so we're, this is also shared using some tunnels and stuff to other sites, but things on this network don't actually get internet access so we have a lot of tablets on the walls to show dashboard technology they don't get internet access using TDS net but they're on the TDS net so they can access all the servers and stuff like that and then the SH which is a smart home network it's where we put all the like Raspberry Pis and door automation and stuff stuff that isn't actually trying to access the internet however needs to all communicate with each other um, you can actually get internet access on the smart home network, however, it's not through Unify, we, that uses the edge router. Let's look at our networks. So these are our network layouts. It's a shame this uh, uh, truncates the third party gateway. Um, so main network is the network. Um, it's the 10.0.0.0 slash 20 subnet, so to 10.0.15.254.254, yeah. Um, that's got LTE failover. Then most of our other things, so Virgin, being the main Virgin Media IP address range, the server network, the test network, the SkyQ network, and the TDS network, TDS net network are all third-party gateways. We also have this network for the dash cam. This is some technology I'm building out right now. In our cars, we have Wi-Fi connected dash cams um, that sort of like can uplink. I'm going to build some code so that on the server we can communicate with the dash cams, and when the cars are at home upload and offload the dash cam footage it's coming soon i think um so there's what we're trying to say so smart home does actually use the usg because we use the lte failover as well as the guest and the security our security on vlan 3 that's got all the cameras all that sort of stuff's on there it does have internet access and it does have failover because that also has a load of servers a few of the security servers on it but however access to it from a different network is not allowed or all that sort of stuff. We've got a load of firewall rules and all that sort of stuff around that. Going over to the internet, we just get a main WAN primary and then LTE backup, like nothing special there. What's over here? What's over here? Oh, this is just the departure. Um, so what, let's look at the clients. So we've got something like nearly getting on for 2000 clients often on the network. Bear in mind, this is just a house. Lots of network devices. So we really do actually utilize a lot of the technology available to Unify. I find the dashboard really good. We do struggle with the topology if you enable the clients, because it looks like this. Like, really? Really? This is so intuitive. So we often leave that off and we just look at it like this. So the gripes, the web interface, a bit iffy. I have issues with running this, like, but overall it's quite good. I can give a more in-depth 
the right question is really, what do you want to see? What are you interested in seeing about my network? It's got large scale deployment when this actually loads some data. Is this going to load any data? Probably not. This is what I mean. Like, really? Come on. How hard is this? Ah, there we go. Uh, we're using large scale deployment. We're using a lot of stuff. Like, we've got the edge router, so we've got different VLANs, um, different public IP addresses. So, we're doing a lot of that sort of routing. But most of the stuff is sort of basic networking. But I'll give a more in depth tutorial on any of that sort of stuff if people are interested. Just let me know what you're interested in. Hope this has been interesting. I hope you've enjoyed seeing our setup, how it looks, all that sort of stuff.